You don't need, I mean, I wouldn't be able to eat, eat one, uh, one of those great big cows myself, would I? They might just manage a little Galloway. Is. Come here, little fellow. Good lad. So, just to demonstrate what we do now, this little fellow. have bare knees, so he's been kneeling down quite a lot. I don't know why that should be. And so now he's about to be lug marked, so this is a, a, an under key bitter. And he's under key bitted on both ears. One, wait a minute, just don't wiggle. Two, and then he's cropped on the left ear. That's my lug mark done, and they're all done like that. So that anyone who picks him up now can see that they're my marks. And then the Smith mark is it's clean on the back, and his Smith mark is a pop on the tail head. Okay, and so that's him done. So anybody can tell he's mine now. Wherever he goes, this you'll be able to look in the book and uh, see that he's mine. And my neighbours will know anyway that he is mine. Come on, let's just have a look at you. It's so dirty. She hasn't actually got any maggots on her, which is one good thing. how you got your rights to the fell again? Well, I, um, I bought some rights which were held in gross by um, the next door farmer who died. Actually, I mean, I bought a lot more land when you disperse that farm and asked if I could buy some rights as well at the same time. So that was how I got the first rights that I had. They entitled me to graze such and such a number of sheep on the fell or the equivalent. Um, 
taking into account um, 10 sheep equals one cow, 12 sheep equals one horse, two sheep equals one goose. Um, that's what I've got. Sheep, sheep, cows, geese, or horses. And also, turbury rights, the right to, to cut ter, uh, peat on the fell for use on the this holding, and the right to take bracken for bedding, and the right to take stone or pinnel for use on my holding. Yeah. You turn the catheter in an anti-clockwise direction until it gets lodged in the ridges um, in the cervix and then you try your bottle. Oh, what? Well, who knows? Time will tell. So, what I need to do now is to pick up the gate, get back into the field. And we'll try and hang the gate if I could ask for a bit of assistance for hanging it. came off very easily didn't it we perhaps should put some string round to lash it round because they are, once they know they can do that oh there's a stable come out of somewhere as well what are we going to do about this I haven't got a hammer we'll have to come back with a new stable I have to use a piece of string in the meantime to tie the gate shut Never go anywhere on a farm without bits of baler twine. My father, when he was alive, used to come and help me. When he died, went through his clothes. There's baler twine in every pocket he had. Was he a farmer as well? <laughs> no, he's a schoolmaster. He loved this place. He thought, well, he was a naturalist. So obviously he loved the natural history aspect of it. And my mother came as well when I first came here and made beautiful flower garden, beautiful little flower garden and a wonderfully stocked vegetable garden. She helped me do that. She would be ashamed of me now if she saw these uh, these gardens which have been let go. But then, of course, in those days I didn't have so many uh, so much livestock. Was it a lot smaller, the farm, then? Yes. It was um, 43 acres when I bought it. And it's 85 now with fell rights. So it's, it's doubled at least. Yeah. First of all, I bought a goat. And then, we, then we'd got six sheep. And they were bred and went up in geometrical oh. progression. And then I got one cow and gradually 
built up a, a herd and um, a dog or two. Oh, and a pig wasn't too far behind. And I always liked Tamworth pigs. I selected this breed because they're the nearest to the native wild and they're hardiest. They do their own thing. They make their own life out here. Anyway, I'll tie up this gate and we'll make off. But now they know there's no food on this side of the gate, they'll perhaps leave it alone. Look how effective this will be. Were your neighbours sceptical when you first moved it? Oh yes, they thought, uh, oh look at her, she's come from away, single woman there on that farm, silly, silly so and so, she won't be there for long. And they didn't take me seriously for a long time, but fortunately there was a farmer down below who knew who I was because I'm local from the other side of the estuary and that she had been brought up over there near where I was born and she knew who I was and she said I know I know and if it hadn't have been for her I would it would have I would have been it would have taken me a lot a lot longer to be accepted than than it really was I mean the other side of the estuary is the other end of the world isn't it how long have you been farming on your own, Joyce? Just over 30 years now. How old were you when you started? About 35. In the prime of life, and I was young and strong, and nothing was any trouble. I could do it all quite well then. Well, you know. Well, I don't let it bother me, though, if I, uh, I, I just. I'd rather be doing this than not doing it kind of business. So.
to do you. Okay? Okay, down you go. Come on, little lamb! Do you want some? I think he doesn't know, does he? Oh, yes, come on! I try first to find the, the, the mother and try and get the mother to take charge of it. If I see a mother inclined to leave the lamb, I usually tie the mother up and make sure the lamb drinks for two and a half days or something like that. As long as the ewe has something to eat there in that spot until she's forced to take the lamb. But generally speaking, <coughs> The better condition that you that your ewes are in, the less likely you are to have orphan lambs. I mean, you might, I say out of about ten, you might lose a couple, two or three. It's just that on a high spot like this, the spring grass comes so very, very late. Now then, excuse me. People say your personal relationship and your uh, home and your work. Well, I've, I haven't got the personal relationship, but I've got home and work combined in one here. So, yes. Yes, I'll be blasting a hole up there. Woodland berries. <laughs> They're all in those, aren't they? No, this is grand. You miss this if you're in the south of England. I know my sister was also working in the south of England and she heard that I'd come up and bought a farm up here and she thought, blow me! I'm not going to be the only one left down here with these little tiny, these tiny little mounds. I'm going to get up amongst the proper stuff, big stuff. So she came back soon after me as well. I came back when I was about 35. 